Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge. Maya here. Um, I'm gonna be giving you guys the final update of the barn the next time that we give like a, you know, here's what's going on in the barn. We should have it all the way finished and we'll be showing you the finished product. So let's get started and go over what we have left to do. Uh, I've got some, some help with me today because it requires, <laughs> stop. This is shooting videos with people around is so much more difficult but I need their help, so. Then I've got Wes and Noah. As you can see, Noah's sitting down. It's, you know, it's his favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go over what's left to do. Um, just a few small things, a few finishing touches. We probably got rest up today and I think tomorrow, and we should be able to call the barn done. Which is like, that's what I'm hoping for. All right, so the, uh, there's the door left. That's the milk room. As you can see, we've got it packed with storage now. All right, so there's the feed room. It's fully finished, also packed with stuff. Uh, one of the jobs that we've been working to get done this week is the electrical. Um, we've had like the milk room's electrical's been uh, finished, the feed room, but the actual main barn electrical, uh, we had some fixtures left. As you can see behind me up on these posts that run down the middle, we've got uh, black fixtures. Um, this will essentially just add some lighting that we can turn on kind of give just some like it's not real bright but just uh, enough to see so like if there's like a cow in here giving birth and we don't want to turn on the bright fluorescence but we want to be able to see what's going on we'll turn on the lights down the middle um plus like i said with everything that we do it's also just about the feel of it how it looks um i wanted to be able to add some soft yellow lighting for filming and stuff especially as it starts getting darker earlier in the day and give us some places to come and just show what's going on brooding chicks or uh, calving things like that uh, all the receptacles are done um, they don't have any receptacle work left to do uh, the two big things i say we have left is we've got some gates to hang um, one of those is going to be uh, behind me um, we're putting two six foot gates uh, at the ends of the two main entrances. So that way we can shut them, uh, close them off and open up the main doors to let it breeze through. Um, especially in the summer when it's getting over 95 degrees, it can get pretty hot in here. Um, the best way to cool it down is to let the air move through it. We actually get a pretty good breeze on this property. Um, so to be able to do that, uh, we when we were first setting up the barn, we had some ideas i had some ideas and one of them was like having like a sliding gate that would technically i think the way we had talked about it was building it into a cubby hole in the side of the feed room and then we'd be able to slide it shut um i don't think that's necessarily a bad idea it was just really complicated and it's going to take a lot of time and i thought of a different i think more efficient idea which is just split the difference so two six foot gates on a 12 foot opening that can uh, open half on each side. The reason we decided to do that is uh, specifically because of the feed room and the milk room. If we were to do just one 12 foot gate, which would work when we opened it, uh, when we're not necessarily using it, it would be covering up one of the doors and the entrances to those two rooms. With the uh, six foot gates, um, that's gonna be less intrusive and less encumbersome when we're trying to work out of these two rooms. All right, one of the big jobs we have left is this stall right here. The reason I left this stall unfinished is because I wanted to kind of go show you guys the process of uh, assembling it and some of the tips and tricks that we use to make sure everything lines up and looks uniform from one stall to the next. Um, so it's really not that much work. We'll knock out a couple of the big details here and then finish up the small details tomorrow. So the stall behind me is the birthing stall. This is where Helen gave birth to Hallelujah in January. Um, it's actually two stalls in one, uh, which gives it essentially a 24 foot by 12 foot deep um, stall. The reason why we decided to do this is for the exact reason of things having enough space. If they have to be barn kept like Helen, when she was close to uh, calving, it was very cold. Actually, Hallie came on, I think, the coldest night of uh, the year of the winter. Um, and so we actually ended up pulling her into the barn and just leaving her in the stall, providing hay and water. Um, because we might have to do that, we wanted to have a stall that would give them enough space to not feel so cramped. You know, a 12 by 12 isn't tiny, and for like an overnight, um, if something's sick, something like that, no problem. But if you're going to be staying multiple days, we wanted to have extra space. 
one of the things that I was just pondering and considering was we may not always need that big of a stall. There may come a time when we need to keep things isolated uh, and we need more smaller space. You know, we need to be able to divide that stall. So we thought of a couple of ideas of like a partition wall that we could raise up and down. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up nixing that idea just because of the amount of weight and the fact that it could malfunction and hurt something. What we ended up going with was just using a gate. So this is stall one, stall two. This beam back to that beam for the pole barn is going to be where it divides. So we ended up going with, I think it's that gate back there, a 10 foot gate. And the reason we did that is so that way when the gate opens from this four by four, it can open all the way to that corner without getting stuck. Now, if we actually tried to use a 12 foot gate from here to this outer post, which is actually the pole barn post, which you can see goes up. Um, when you open it to the corner, it actually starts catching and doesn't fully open all the way. It just became kind of a, it was going to be kind of a pain in the butt. So we took some measurements and after we figured out that that was going to be too tight of a fit, we came up with the idea of essentially dropping this four by four in. We'll build just a little pony wall in between the two posts so that way they can't pass through there, or get their head stuck in it. And that way the gate will open up to this four by four and be secured to it. And then when we don't, uh, I guess when we need it separated, we'll be able to open the gate and, and section it off. And then if we need extra space, we'll be able to just swing the gate to the corner, latch it up against the wall and have the bigger stall. All right, Nosk, where do you want to start? You want to start on the two by sixes on that little pony wall there? there? Or do you want to go on the divider wall? Um, it don't make no difference to me. I'd say uh, we can just get them both done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. All right, so this is a six by six, and so is that. We went ahead and set them in concrete just so that they could be fully set up to be able to show the progress of building out the stall. Um, if we didn't already do that, then we essentially would set this and then have to come back 24 hours later to be able to start building on it. Some things should just be understood, like, you know, if you need to know how to set a post in concrete, like, there's probably lots of YouTube videos about it. It's pretty straightforward. You know, dig a hole, put the concrete in it. Now, what's not, may not, may not be straightforward, is how do we get it lined up so that way the stall is as square as it needs to be. Now, again, I say this all the time when I talk about building stuff, this is a farm structure, it's not your house, it's not something that we're gonna live in, so square is important, but it's not like the most important thing. It does not have to be exactly perfect. Um, but how we got these posts lined up the way we need to is, you know, when they came and constructed the pole barn, they, you know, squared up all their beams that are holding the structure. All we did was string a line from the beam on my right to the beam on my left, and then we essentially squared that up when we set this in concrete and put the bracing on it. Um, made it a lot easier for us. We didn't have to take any measurements and square up any of the strings because I was just building off of what was already squared by the company that put the barn in. Um, same thing goes for the 4x4 there and for this 6x6. We essentially just used what was already set up and made everything line up and, and sit flush before we put the concrete in. And we concreted them, took the bracing off, and now we're going to start building on it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so here's a tip, something that we figured out in doing all the fencing and the stall building that we've done. Uh, so to actually secure this together, we're actually going to use, I think, four inch screws. Um, but when we were in this phase, which is getting everything uh, level and lined up, what we learned to do is to use a framing nailer and just tack it up with one nail on each side, which will hold it up there and keep it level. And you come back through after you get everything nailed and you put all the screws in. Um, they seem to be way more efficient. It's way faster than trying to keep something on a straight line and level and then drive a screw. The nail gun literally tacks it in place, keeps it level, and then you can come back through afterwards and put your, all your screws in. You don't have to come back and fix uh, throwing something off by, like I said, trying to drive a screw and then it's not secured and you're trying to hold the weight. It's just, it's complicated. So my advice is pack everything over the nail, come back through and throw your screws in. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's get the last one in. Explain how you uh, didn't tell me to stop if you want. <laughs> no, that's not necessary. That camera is on now, okay? All right, so we've got all four of those two by sixes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, so now what? You're cutting off the top, the excess? Yeah, I'm just going to cut off the top of this six by six here so we can cap it with a two by eight or two, two by, by ten, eight. maybe. All right, what's the spacing in between that? 
The spacing in between, I just split it uh, evenly, so it's 48 inches from the bottom of the bottom board to the top of this one, so it's 14 inches in between each one. Puts it about center. It puts it to where the gap is about the same for each space. So okay, cool. I try to make it even. Sounds good. All right, so cut the post and then running a two by eight cap along the top. Yes, sir. All right. Off one of the edges, I need an inch and a half. Actually, no, that's not true. I'll give you measurements in a second. Just cut it 73. This rip needs to be four and three quarter strong deep by an inch and a half is what needs to be left. Right, so we're capping with two by eight. Um, we did this outside on all of the uh, H braces and fencing, um, which you've seen all around the property. One of the reasons is like right now we could just stop and this would be a functional stall. The cap isn't necessary, but it does put a clean edge and it also gives a place for Jessica to set cameras, um, for us to set stuff down like if we're medicating, things like that, just kind of gives like a flat surface to use. And so we've capped pretty much all the uh, the walls here in, in, in the stalls. Um, one thing we'll have to account for on this first run is notching around the post, so that way the cap comes all the way to the two by six. Um, he's already sent measurements over to Wes, so he's gonna notch that two by eight out and then we'll tack it on. You did break down. Yeah. She's pretty good? Yeah. 47 and 3 eight. Shoot it right where it is. It's flush, right, this way? Yeah, well this notch has about eight lower, so we're gonna do it about eight lower. Right there? Yeah. I know, what are, you, what are you putting in now? Um, we're gonna add a two by six to right here below the cap against the six by six uh, to just catch that edge, because if you don't, it will it could warp or break down when kids jump on it or any of those things. Okay, but, I understand what you're saying. So show them, so put it in place so they understand. We're gonna put yeah. it right here. Yeah, and it goes from there down to the ground and then he'll cap it in on top. And that'll essentially holds the weight of this back corner of the two by eight. Yeah, and then we'll just attach it right here. Hey guys, welcome to some behind the scenes uh, of what it's like to be a content creator. Sometimes you shoot a really good video and you have all the information on a particular project that you can't go back and repeat and you go to edit after the project's done and uh, half the audio is completely ruined and unusable. And so here we are. Uh, I was actually shot the video, went out of town for my grandfather's funeral and while I was gone, Jessica informed me that for whatever reason, the audio on the rest of the video was completely unusable, which made the footage mostly unusable. So, here we are. Um, I'm gonna go through and explain what is missing off the end of this video and kind of just show uh, what we ended up doing to finish off the stall. Um, the benefit of this is that now that the project's done, um, this stall's finished, the separating the dividing wall, you know, the cattle panels installed, I can actually show you every single detail that went into to finishing out the stalls and basically all the stalls here in the barn, which was actually not in the unusable footage. It can be very disappointing when stuff like that happens, very frustrating or discouraging, but like I said, it's part of just uh, creating content and working with technology and equipment. Um, I'm gonna do my best to, to, to round this video out. Okay, where we left off um, was right here at this uh, partition wall, this half wall that complements the Front of the stall and holds the gate. Um, Noah was just putting in this two by six brace post. Um, we've got the cap on. Um, one thing that we weren't able to, we hadn't shown yet, was the uh, utility panel, which I will point out. Um, we started actually by putting in cattle panels. Um, we actually switched to what they call a utility panel. This is a four inch by four inch square, which you know, cattle panels. They have smaller squares towards the bottom and larger squares towards the top. The issue I ran into with that is um, whenever we were brooding the geese and the ducks and the chickens, um, before we, they were adolescent enough to move out to pasture, the cattle panels, they could just get through them. With these utility panels, it's actually, I think, safer for all the animals. Um, another issue we ran into is whenever I had Hallie after she was born and I needed to separate her to milk Helen, 
her head was small enough to fit through the different spaces at the top. To me, that was just not worth the risk of is something getting caught, her twisting and hurting herself. So we ended up switching out all the cattle panels to these four by four utility panels. Um, they sell them at tractor supply, feed stores, things like that. I would highly advise doing something like that or smaller. So after putting the cap on and nailing this with fencing staples on the back side, another thing I'd like to point out is we ran all of our two by sixes on the outsides of these uh, posts. And instead of running, which I'm pretty sure when we first started building these, we tried running the panels and securing them to the posts also. Um, what that ended up causing was uh, I was having to mount the lumber on the, on the outside over the utility panels, which made them bumpy and uneven, and it didn't seem to work that well. So one thing we switched to in the process of working this out was cutting the panels and attaching them on the back side with fencing staples um, works out great. Uh, we've done that not just in the barn, but at all the different corner braces and gate uh, braces for all of our exterior fences. Um, we've kind of switched to this to this method. All right, so now we've also got our gate mounted. It fits, it's a pretty tight fit, but it fits perfectly. We could have re done this wall a little different to give us a little more space, um, which we decided not to just because of time. Um, but essentially these are two by 12s and there's a two by 10 at the bottom. And we just basically ran those on this near side of the posts all the way down and secured them. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some uh, time-lapse footage of us putting this wall together. Um, it's not going to have any audio, um, but obviously because it was, it was damaged. But it'll just show you them essentially. They're just literally stacking these up uh, on top of each other, uh, tacking them up with some nails, coming back through and putting screws on and putting the cap on. Um, you know, one thing to point out just with how our barn was designed, these were 12 foot boards and we didn't have to cut them to get them uh, to install. This was pretty much exactly 12 foot from that post to, to this post. One thing we've done on all of our barns and all of our gates is use these Gallagher chain latches. Um, I've showed them before, but essentially it comes with a chain and two big staples. Um, it's got this latching system. It's got this ring on it. Um, I like these because they're easy to get in and out of. Uh, they don't really rust out. They don't stop functioning because a screw comes loose or something falls out. They're literally secured in there with, like I said, those massive staples. I can also open and close these gates one-handed. Here's how it works. So, so that side stapled, it comes across, and this one's going to drop into the other staple on this side, and that's going to secure the gate. I switched to using those Gallagher latches on pretty much every gate, every exterior gate that's on fencing, or pretty much every uh, gate that's in the barn. Um, I've never had a complaint. I think they're superior. I've tried other latching methods, and honestly, I've had to maintenance those latching systems way more often than I've ever had to come and fix um, one of the Gallagher chain latches. That's just my experience. They're not real expensive. And like I said, they last a long time. There's no really mechanical uh, component to them, so they're not gonna malfunction. You know, I've used sliding and, and other different kinds of hooks. And I mean, seriously, I've, I've just tried a plethora of different latching systems. This is probably my go-to for these kinds of applications. You know, obviously, like on our sliding barn doors, you know, we use uh, something completely different. That's just a hook with an eyelet. This is definitely gonna be one of the uh, benefits of uh, having that audio problem. Um, this pony wall and dividing gate system, we actually were not able to get finished uh, when shooting that the original footage, um, but because we're having to come back and reshoot some stuff, we've got this part done. Um, I'll go, I wanna go ahead and show you guys how we solved this particular problem. Uh, like I said before, this is a double stall that we wanted to be able to open it up if we needed more space. For example, when cows are giving birth, if they have to have an extended stay in the barn, giving big animals like that more space is always a better idea. We went through a lot of different ideas to figure out uh, how did we want to make that stall, uh, I guess modular would be the correct word, uh, you know, flexible uh, to be able to accommodate what we're talking about. Um, the solution we settled on was running a gate system, just like you know all the other gates that we use on all the stalls and outside. We decided to go with a 10-foot gate, even though this is a 12 by 12 stall. Putting a 12-foot gate 
Um, would have covered the full amount of the space, but when we went to open the gate to open the stall up, um, from swinging from this post to the corner, there actually wasn't enough space. Uh, it was actually going to be uh, connecting with the barn and the wood on this uh, wall uh, before it actually got fully open. And so what we decided to do was to go with a 10 foot gate and to build out a little bitty wall that kind of made up the two foot difference. So right now I've got it closed off. There's the stall. Here's one stall. There's the other stall. It's currently closed off. This is the little pony wall we built, um, which is just a four by four concreted and then two by sixes. And I think this is all scrap material from building the other side and basically just all nailed up and screwed up. And then again, we've got our Gallagher latch system. So when we come out to open this up, it's going to be super simple and super easy. I'll go ahead and show you guys. We'll just undo that. I think gate opens. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll basically run right there. And I'm going to put another Gallagher latch right there that will just chain that to the wall to keep it against the wall so that way they don't get stuck behind it um, while they're moving around. And now we've got one giant stall instead of two. And then we can reverse it. Cool thing about these rings is once it's latched like that, you can't get the, the hook out unless you pull back on the ring first and then turn it out. That's actually what makes that particular latch uh, more animal proof. Uh, I've actually seen a goat before use their tongue to undo and open different latch systems. Um, I've never seen any, any of our animals be able to get one of these open. I just think it takes too much coordination. All right, that's all the information that I had to cover to round this video out. Um, it's not a full barn tour. We are actually very close to having the barn completely finished, um, but we're gonna do that on a separate video. Um, I am very excited to show you kind of the finished product. Uh, the next step before we're actually fully done and ready to reveal it is uh, Jessica's got to put up her decorations and finishing touches to make it, you know, more Jessica. And I've got my tool trailer parked in here right now to get all my tools organized out of the barn and back into the tool trailer so we can move on to the next project. Um, so be looking for that video very soon. Um, sorry for the... Uh, mix up in footage but I feel like you guys actually got more information about how we built out our different stalls and solved different problems uh, with the with the problem and so you know gotta look on the bright side thank you for hanging out with us and I bless you until next time